Hi, I'm Ben from The Things Industries, and today I'm going to show you how to install the Things stack using Docker. What you'll need is a machine with a domain name pointing towards it, and on that machine, you'll need Docker and Docker Compose installed. If you're running the Things stack Enterprise, you'll also need a license key. Let's get started. Step one is to configure Docker and the Things stack. In the documentation, under Getting Started Installing the Things stack, we have example configuration files for Enterprise and open source. Start by creating this example folder configuration. First, I'll SSH into my machine. Create a folder to work in. Create the example folders. And now I'll download these example configuration files into those folders. Docker Compose should be in the root. And make sure that you name that file docker-compose.yml. The stack configuration file should be in config slash stack, and it should be named ttn-lw-stack-docker.yml. Now let's go and make sure that those files are configured correctly. So first, I'll look at the Docker Compose file. So in Docker Compose, we pull images for Cockroach, Redis, and the Things stack. And in production, you'll want to replace these image tags with a known working tag. For example, I can see on Docker Hub that the latest Things stack tag is 3.10.3. .3. You can see in Docker Compose that we mount this config slash tag folder into the config folder inside the Docker environment. And from there, we access that TTN LW stack Docker configuration file. If you're using Acme to automatically pull TLS certificates for your domain, the Docker Compose file should be fine the way it is. But if you want to use custom certificates, then you can use one of the configuration options down below. Now let's go and configure our stack configuration. So the first thing we need to enter is a license key if we're running the ThingStack Enterprise. And next, you can configure the default email configuration that the ThingStack will use to send emails. If you're running a multi-tenant environment, make sure you configure an admin key, which you can use to manage those tenants. We've included convenient commands that you can use to generate keys. You should also generate keys to encrypt cookies. Choose passwords to access metrics and performance profiling. If you're using Acme, configure the hosts and default host for your domain. If you're running multi-tenant, you'll also want to configure hosts that represent those tenant subdomains. I'm going to configure two tenants called default and other tenant. So I've configured hosts, which represent those tenants. Make sure you configure a correct email address as well. If you already have certificates, you can uncomment the lines to specify those files here. For multi-tenant environments, you want to configure a base domain and default ID. The default ID is the tenant that's created if you don't specify an ID, and the base domain infers the tenant from the domain that you enter when you access the console. That should be your root domain. Now I'm going to go and replace all the example URLs with my domain. And that should be all the configuration we need. Step two is to set up certificates. If you're using Acme, all you need to do is create the folder where Acme can store those certificates and make sure you have correct permissions over it. If you're using your own certificates, you can find instructions in the certificate section about how to set that up. Step three is running the stack. In the documentation, under running the thing stack, we have all the commands you need. First, I'll do a Docker Compose pull to pull the tags that I specified in the Docker Compose file. Then I'll initialize the identity server database. If you're running enterprise, you'll need to create the default tenant. In this case, the create tenant command takes the default ID, which I specified in the configuration file. But now I'll create another tenant just as an example. And now I've created a second tenant called other tenant. Next, configure an admin user. Make sure to enter your email address and give it a good password. 
Then we'll register the command line as an OAuth client. Finally, we'll do the same for the console. Make sure that you replace the secret with the secret that you specified in your configuration, and also replace the example URIs with your own domain. And then we're ready to run the stack. The command docker compose up should start the stack. You can also use the dash D flag to run in detached mode. Now you should be able to access the console in the browser. And the first time you use HTTPS, the stack will automatically retrieve certificates from Acme. It might take a second, and then you should be able to connect using TLS. And that's it. That's how you install the ThingStack using Docker. Thanks for using the ThingStack, and thanks for watching.